and welcome to part 3 of chapter 2 in our FPS RPG series. In this part, we're going to work on accuracy. Getting our guns to respond to accuracy based on the amount of time we've been firing, the accuracy value of the gun itself, and whether or not we're crouched. So when we're crouched, we're more accurate than when we are uncrouched. So first thing we want to do is record how long we've been firing for at each, uh, each time we're pushing that trigger. So on weapon parent, we're going to make a function here that calculates how long we've been firing for. So in my variables, I'm going to add a new variable. And this is going to be um, firing time. And that will be a float. And so this is going to record how long you've been firing in. So what we're going to do here is going to create a new function. And we'll call this one um, calculate uh, firing time and in here we're going to drag the firing time out choose get and then we're going to add a value to it and we're going to add the get world delta seconds now get world delta seconds is the the time between frames um in seconds okay so this is recording not exactly time. So if we hold it down the trigger, it's not recording one second, two second, three second. It's re it's recording the lag between each frame. Okay, the splits of seconds, which is fine for what we want to use because we're just recording time, not relative to our regular human time. So in here, once we've got that, we drag firing time out again. Choose set and plug that in. Now, for testing purposes, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we print string that value and then on fire bullet i'm going to put it right at the start here we're going to drag that function out calculate firing time plug that in plug that in okay so now that's going to do a print string for us so play and you can see here if i hold down the trigger that value goes up because it's adding that value to it now what i want it to do is so when i let go of the trigger that, that figure resets okay so go back to weapon parent go to the event graph and we've got stop shooting we're going to drag a firing time out choose set and leave it at zero so now when i push play i shoot number goes up i let go and i shoot and you see it reset back to zero okay so using this value we can calculate how long we've been firing for and then use that value to um, adjust the accuracy of our shots. So in our fire bullet, we've got the line trace using the endpoint as the uh, camera rotation and location. So what we're going to do is add a little offset to the rotation of that uh, shot here um, so that we can um, randomize it a little bit based on accuracy. So get forward vector, we're going to use that and we're going to random vector in cone degrees. And that kind of says what it does. So it will get your random uh, vector, vector, basically a random direction in a cone like shape in a, from a starting direction. So this cone half angle, if we put in say 20 degrees, that gives us a full cone of 40 degrees as it does 20 degrees as a radius. So, and that will output then a vector. That vector will then be added to this range here. So we do that to the range to multiply that there. And we will now have a randomized unit vector. So let's spread this out so we get a bit more ease of seeing this. Okay, so the random unit vector has got this cone half angle in degrees. So this angle here is going to have a minimum to a maximum. Okay, now we don't want it to go nuts because it'll look really stupid and weird. So we're going to drag out from here and do um, multiply float. And we're going to do a multiplication of the top value by a bottom value of, say, I don't know, 15. Okay, so 15 degrees either side. And the top value will be a value from our accuracy sort of algorithm so the accuracy algorithm we're going to start off with is going to be starting with our calculate firing time 
So that firing time is available here. So drag this out, get firing time. And then if you were to plug that into there straight away, you're going to get something that starts off very accurate and then gets a lot worse as time goes on. And if I shoot, you can see it's starting to go a bit more wild. Okay. So as you see, it has no clamp on it. It just keeps going and going and going and going because the value you can see there is going to 1.8 and 1.2 and it's going to keep going multiplying by 15 every single time. So what we want to do is clamp that down so it doesn't go round weird and stupid. So we're going to clamp this end value. So clamp float between zero and 15. So the maximum it'll ever be is 15 degrees away from its starting direction. Okay, and that sort of just reins it in a little bit. Okay, so at a point, our firing time will have no effect on our shooting. Obviously, this would be affected by it as well by the animation. So the animation will look like it's working really well with this. But you can see here, it's not going off wild like it was before. So that's with it as a base value. So that is base with just using firing time. Now, obviously, we've got this accuracy value here as well. An accuracy value is um, a value that's going to determine how accurate we're going to use firing time. So accuracy is going to be a normalized value between 0 and 1. So if it's 1, it's going to be 100% accurate. Okay. If it is less than that, then it'll be less accurate. So to do that, we're going to take our firing time and our accuracy here. Now, if accuracy is 1, if we multiply that by firing time and say firing time is 1, then it's going to give us a value of 1 through here. Now, that's not what we want because we want accuracy to be um, a higher number than my accuracy is, okay? which will make that this, if we multiply them together, simply just inaccurate. But what if we actually switched it around? So for accuracy, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this, sorry, not multiply, 1 minus it, so minus, and put that in the bottom. In the top one, it's going to be 1. So 1 minus the accuracy value multiplied by the firing time. So firing time multiplied by that into our other multiplication. Okay. And if you want, you can also combine these. You don't have to do them two separate ones. So you can take an add pin here and do 15 there. It just saves you a node. You can just do that. Okay. So firing time is being multiplied by accuracy, accuracy taken away from 1. So if we've got, say, an accuracy, accuracy value of 0 0.75, so fairly accurate, that 1 minus that will give us 0 0.25 times by firing time will make it more and more accurate because firing time will now be closer to 0 and take longer to get to that final result. Okay, so that will do that there. Hit compile. And we should see now takes a lot longer for it to get more wild okay um well there's a way we can measure that so let's count how long that get takes to get to um let's print string this so i bear with me we're just going to print string this so i can just demonstrate how different it is in length of time so that print string we're going to come down from this node here and this will get us a value of, actually no, let's do it from the clamp here. Do it from the clamp, there we go. So that is now gonna output the angles that are taken away. Actually, let's go back and get rid of this pin string. So now we should just get the one pin string. Okay, so now we're getting closer to 15. So take note of how long it's taken us to get to 15. Okay, so Fair while, but if we took out the, uh, if we made accuracy equal to one, so super accurate, you should see it take it even longer. Oh, whoops, that's because we set it to take away. So it's going to be set to zero, and if you multiply by zero, obviously you get zero. So we can't make this ever equal to zero. So we're going to clamp that. to a minimum value of 0 0.01, max value of one. That'll go into there like so. 
Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, so now you can see it takes a lot longer for it to get to uh, 15. Okay, and that's at maximum accuracy. This is maximum, okay? So um, it's going to take a while, okay? So that is um, one step. The next step is also um, the crouching method as well. So on accuracy here, I'm going to set the default of this to 0 0.5 for now. And to demonstrate again, you can see how long it takes to get to 15. Okay, so it's a bit faster than obviously when it's at full accuracy, but it's still a lot slower. So we're gonna make it so when it's crouched, it's more accurate. Okay. Um, so let's go to our player character. And let's work on crouching. Now we've already set up the input action for crouching. So if I right click here and type in crouch, I will get the crouch action event. But we have to make sure our actor can actually crouch. So click on the character movement component and just search in the details box for the word crouch. And you'll see a tick box saying can crouch. Tick that to turn it on. And then when we do the input action crouch, the pressed is going to be crouch and the released is going to be uncrouch. Done. That's all you have to do. Okay. So when we're crouching, what it's actually doing is taking this capsule and the camera and everything else and halving it. So you can get underneath stuff. So to show you that. So it's me pushing left shift. I can crouch. Okay. So we now want it to respond that crouch um, to the accuracy. So when we crouch, we want to change the accuracy value. So I'm going to take our casting that we're doing here. We'll copy that and paste that down here. And when we crouch, we're going to multiply that to crouch accuracy. So take accuracy, multiply it by float. And here we're going to double it. So times it by two. And we're also going to do this uncrouch. Uncrouching, we're going to take accuracy here and divide it by two. That should set it back to what it was. So we take that and then we take the as weapon parent and go set accuracy. Now we're plugged into the top there and Accuracy would be this one here, and then we'll do exactly the same. Plug it into uh, the uncrouch as weapon parent as the target, and accuracy value is the division one. So now it should toggle between the two. So if I shoot, it goes up semi quickly. If I hold down shift, it'll go up a lot more accurate. Okay, let go of it, it goes back up. So that is the general gist of it, basically. And you can obviously tweak these numbers to match whatever you want to do with your gun. So if you want to do different accuracy um, uh, degrees, you can do here. If you want to change the amount the crouch does, you can do as well as, as well here. Um, it's totally up to you what you do for these values. It doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you. Okay. So, but that's the general gist of it. Um, so let's get rid of our print strings here because... I think we're kind of done with getting our bullet to be responding to accuracy. So hit play. So we can shoot, 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 shoot. And if I crouching, a lot more accurate when I'm crouching. And if we could also adding the ability to movement as well. So we get the velocity of the character, make that tweak the uh, accuracy of the gun as well. Um, but we'll leave it as is for now. Okay. But that's something else you could do as well. Anyway, that will do for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we're going to do part four next. And in part four, we'll work on the ammo counter and get it so it only shoots out the maximum ammo in the gun. And that will eventually lead into reloading the gun as well. So thank you very much. Sorry, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to watch the next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. You can watch that part plus many other parts of videos too. So thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support and making this channel able to exist. So thank you so much for your support. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future content, leave one down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.